Hey everybody, Tom Chantal. Welcome to week two of our Trading Essentials webinar series. This is obviously, as you know, a four-week series. We started last week with Options Basics. Uh, we did some stuff about all about calls, all about puts, and then creating lists and working with stock lists. I also gave you a little homework assignment. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to do a little review of week one. We're going to uh, get into spreads, and we're going to talk about dark debt today. And I want to do that all in 90 minutes or less. So uh, live case studies are included. But before we begin, let me go ahead and uh, just do a little housekeeping here like we do every single week, every single webinar, that is. Uh, first of all, this session, like all of our sessions, is being recorded. All right. So those of you that are new to us tonight uh, that happened to catch, couldn't show up last week, I uh, want to let you know that uh, we do have a recording of last week's session. Just email us at support at tomgentile.com. That's support at tomgentile.com, and we will be happy to get you week one's recording. This session will be recorded. We'll get it out as soon as possible following this live broadcast. All right, you can ask questions in the Q&A box, but I'm going uh, to go ahead and apologize to you right now because we're not going to be able to get to everyone's question. There are just so many people in here tonight. I'm glad to see everyone. Welcome back again. And finally, the disclaimer you see on the screen. All right. Uh, so you can read this from beginning to end uh, with the recording that is going to be sent to you, all right? But I want to point out just a few things before we begin. Number one, and all of you probably know this, stock and options trading has large potential rewards, but also large potential risk, all right? Um, what uh, Jay, myself, Optionetics, Tom's Trading Room, and everyone associated with it, what we're here for is... We're here as your educator, all right? We're here to educate you on how we trade the markets. We're not investment advisors. We do not give specific trading advice, all right? You need a broker to trade with. You must meet certain requirements, and everything I'm going to talk about tonight is in U.S. dollars unless noted otherwise. So that being said, let's go ahead and uh, welcome everybody back. Uh, you know, uh, I mentioned this last week that uh, that my, my team and I are back and we're offering all kinds of education. We do the education throughout the year. So I'll be doing trade essential webinars on a regular basis. But in between those, I might pop in with a special webinar. That special webinar might be, it might have to do with just volatility on its own. Or it might happen to do with butterfly strategies. Um, or it might happen to do with credit spreads. Or something that I don't cover in the trade essentials uh, room. So keep your uh, eyes on your inbox because I'll be sending you these. These are going to be live webinars we're going to be doing throughout the year. All right. Um, uh, also, uh, plat you know, Platinum and Tom Tools users, we use these. We use these particular pieces of software. We use Tom'sOptionTools.com. We use the software in there uh, for all of our charts, all of our scans, um, and uh, risk graphs, and much, much more. And you can uh, get a limited free time subscription to Tom's Option Tools.com. Just go there and you'll find out how. Uh, and also, finally, I mentioned this too for any of my partners that are here tonight or our mastery members. Nothing is really changing for what, you know, with, when it comes to our premium education. So, not a problem. We keep moving on. So, uh, guys, uh, again, um, if you were to go to optionetics.com, you're going to see this particular screen, and we spell out exactly where you want to go from everything to what we do at Tom's Trading Room. If you're a returning Optionetics student, uh, if you are a Platinum user, definitely want to click there uh, because we've we've made a change. Tom's Option Tools is where uh, we've got that major upgrade to Platinum right now. And then, of course, a little bit about me. So we are going to pop into week two, which is a review of last week. We're going to talk about channel collisions, all about spreads and trading with the dark net strategy. We'll get into week four, three and week four uh, as we get into the end of June. So quick, quick review. All right. We talked last week about uh, we did all about calls, all about puts. And I don't want to go through the entire presentation with calls and puts again. But I just want to remind everybody uh, when it comes to calls and puts, you know, there's 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 a couple of different ways you can trade these. All right. When I think about it right away, a call option, you know, number one use that I use a call option for is simply buying it. I buy call options. All right. I buy call options around 
but not limited to the 30-day time frame. Calls give me the right to buy, but not the obligation. Specific stocks at predetermined prices anytime up to the expiration of the option. And puts are the opposite. All right, gives me the right to sell. Now, if I'm a call, if, if I can, I'm a call trader, I can do a couple of things with a call. I can buy it outright, that's bullish. I can sell it outright if you have enough capital, that's bearish. I could also buy it against a stock price, as maybe a short put. All right. Or I'm sorry, not a short put. I could buy it against a short stock. And that would give me the ability that if short stock goes against me, the call option would go up as an insurance. All right. What we also could do is we can match it to other calls or puts to create different spreads. The put option is exactly the same, but in reverse. I'm, I'm typically a put buyer on the downside. I got to tell you, though, uh, you know, for me, when I go and I look at uh, the past several years, if I looked at number of calls to number of puts, it's probably 80-20. I, you know, and, and I try my best when my systems dictate to balance myself out as much as possible. But there are times when things are lining up on the bullish side and I do a lot of more calls. You know, for instance, I was talking about to th this week that, you know, I had I had long signals in the Dow and in the bonds. Uh, I, held, I also, you know, and so if you're long the Dow and you're long the bond market, you really in a sense, you have a hedge. And if you're long gold, you have even more of a hedge because if all three of these go up, it's not supposed to happen, all right? But I don't ask why on a lot of my rules-based trading. And when we get to week four, we'll talk about rules-based trading. But let's go ahead and just do a little homework right now. So I want to spend maybe the first, the, you know, the next 10 minutes or so just talking a little bit about our homework. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll you know, dart in and out and look at some... Um, look at some strategies along these areas. So I'm really going to look at about seven charts here in the next 10 to 15 minutes. So we're going to take a look at stocks, bonds, currencies, and commodities like I did last week. And uh, this time what I did was I kept the, the screen blank. I did not pop the, uh, uh, you know, pop anything in the windows because I want you to kind of look at it the way that I do. So I call this segment my market outlook. So here we go in the market outlook, and I'm looking at SPY. And I showed you last week when we were looking at SPY, we were looking at what? We were looking at channels inside of channels. And when you look at a channel, there's actually three different parts of it. We've got the lower part of the channel, we've got the upper part of the channel, and then we've got the equilibrium, which is right in the middle. All right. And in this case, we've got two different channels. We've got a longer one, and we've got a shorter one. And if you notice, the longer uh, uh, channel, it has its own long-term trend up, but the short one has an even more of a steeper trend higher. Now, look what happened just a couple of days ago. We had in the S&P, we came into Friday, we hit Friday, and we closed back above it. The next day, which was Monday, we actually came down and we were hitting that equilibrium channel within the short-term uptrend, uptrend channel. That was a good support point. And it looks like we're trying to, trying to hold that support point, even with the volatility of the tech wreck that happened last week, week. even with the uh, the incident that happened in Washington this morning, all right, with the congressman getting shot, um, even with the Fed raising rates a quarter of a point, all right, this did not do a whole lot of damage, if any at all, to the stock market. Right now, obviously, time will tell, but uh, we've got some really good support laying right here in this area. But I'm not that convinced, and the reason why is because of our next channel, and our next channel was TLT. Now, take a look at this. Now, why did we get the pop up? Does anybody know why all of a sudden did bonds go from where I was looking at it on Friday, Monday, and yesterday? And actually, we we got a long signal on Monday where I was looking at it, where we had channel collision happening and where it is today. Uh, well, I mean, the why could be that we had uh, that incident in Washington. It spooked a lot of people because if you look at the price of gold, it opened higher, but then it closed lower. Uh, but if you look at the price of bonds, it opened high and started to move lower. And then look what happened. The Fed came in and, and raised rates a quarter point as expected. And the bond market actually closed a little higher than it opened. 
which is which is you know it, the markets always seem to do the opposite of what logic uh, it, logic dictates. So that's the bond market. Now let's stop right there for a moment. I'm going to switch gears, and I'm going to look at um, at DIA, which is also uh, a trend, a, a stock that, or an index that's trending, trending better than the S and P on the short term. And the reason why is because look at what happened last week. All right, if you see what happened last week with uh, the tech stocks, actually money was not pouring out of industrials and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And more importantly, money was actually pouring into it in some cases, which made the Dow Jones Industrial Average look pretty good. So um, those of you that are you know, partners or those of you that are, are you know, part of our professional trading group, you know about the trade on Tuesday that we took in DIA, all right? And you know we're going to be exiting that trade. We took this with the weeklies. So we're going to be exiting this before the end of the week. Uh, so, you know, but you can, it, to get an idea of why, uh, why DIA, why not QQQ? Well, let's take a look at QQQ, okay? Because, you know, maybe last month, even maybe even last week, QQQ was the strongest of the indices. That doesn't look so strong to me anymore. Where we get this drop down that takes us back to uh, back to to lows that we hadn't seen since before Memorial Day. All right. So again, I like to go long the strong. All right, long the strong and short the weak. And I'm not saying it's a good time to start short in QQQ. I'm just saying that long and strong, short the week means that if you have a buy signal in an, in an index, and most of the indexes all trade within a 98% positive correlation with each other, then go with the strongest one. That's what I'm going to do. All right. So that's Q, That's a, a quick look at, um, at uh, DIA and QQQ. Now, let's look at TLT for a moment. All right. So TLT. And again, I, I want to bring this, uh, you know, this is a 104 uh, degree chart, but I want I want to show you this for two reasons. Number one, bonds uh, hit a new high for the year. Okay. When bonds go up, what happens? What what goes down? Interest rates. There's a negative effect on the U.S. dollar uh, against certain foreign currencies. And so this is telling us that that perhaps there might be some time between now and the next interest rate hike. All right. As a trader, I don't, as a short-term trader, I really don't care, all right? Because let's look at the 30-day. The 30-day window is going to give us a little more clear picture about what happened today, all right? In fact, if I turn off the channels and I just go with the stock and I go with an at-the-money implied volatility. So let's see what the option traders have to say. And that's the IV itself. Uh, let's try one more time. Stock and the overlay. <laughs> This is what happens in live events. But get an idea here. Look what happened. So we get a pop up in the bond prices. Look what happens to the IV on it. We actually drop. That's because implied volatility in this particular security is inverse. All right. Like the stock market. It's inverse. And you know why? Because this this is a, um, a reaction or it is a... Um, uh, a risk off asset. And as it goes up, we see volatility going down. As it goes down, we see volatility going up most of the time. All right. So you get an idea what's what happened here. But this this was a good bit of Washington. It was a good bit of the Fed rate today. The Fed rate is what kept it up. Washington and the the uh, the terror that went on there uh, with that gentleman, uh, you know, shooting um, the congressman and his aides at that baseball practice this morning. That's what started this whole thing at 8, 8, 8.30 in the morning, I believe, is when this all, all started happening. So what I want to look at, too, and by the way, take a look at this next chart, volume. See how many people went into bonds. We're talking about something that trades that an, it trades at an average in the last 30 days of about 6 million shares a day. And all of a sudden, we're hitting 20 million shares uh, in the bond market. All right. So this is interesting because it actually tells me that a lot of money went in to this security. My question is where does it go from here? All right, because there's a lot of, there was a big push. That's a fear push that went into this today. All right, 
And is the fear push going to continue or is it going to exhale? And really, the next couple of days are going to be the, the time that tells. All right, back to FXE. Now, FXE, the uh, currency, the euro currency, this opened higher in the morning too, but it crushed down, which suggests that the stock market uh, may have overlooked this and may be moving higher. Okay, because FXE is more has become more and more of a risk off security. All right, it means that as the stock market goes up, this tends to want to go down. As the stock market goes down, it tends to want to go up. But for the last two last uh, oh, I want to call it probably month. All right. Uh, the Euro Trust, the Euro dollar, has turned its attention to what's been going on in France with the French elections. Now it should start to, to move more like a currency that reacts to what happens over here than, than it has been in the last month or two. And finally, oil, which has been in a downtrend, all right? And I took a short-term move uh, on a signal that I had in uh, Chevron that was an oversold signal, and that paid me off in spades last week. Uh, that was a great trade. And so, um, I mean, it was more than 100% return. I, 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 can't, I can't tell you how much. I can't remember how much it is, but it was a triple digit return for sure on Chevron. But look what oil did. Went right back to, uh, you know, and, and what caused this move down? Does anybody have an idea? Could it have been, I mean, it's not, it's, it, it's not an inventory uh, move, but it is a Fed move. All right. It's a Fed move. And it's also, uh, you know, a, a little bit of what happened uh, with the markets uh, earlier today. So those four stocks, and I want you to, to realize what we're looking at, folks, is channel collisions. We're looking at where we have two different channels that are lining up one way or another. And what we're finding is reaction points. All right. Reaction points to the upside, reaction points to the downside. And, the, and part of what I'm doing is also teasing you a little bit um, on what we have coming up here later on this evening, not too, not in the not too distant future. So uh, last one, gold. All right. A lot of uh, concern about what's gone with the price of gold. I don't think anything's gone on with the price of gold. In fact, what happened was gold took that, that uh, reaction where it jumped up and all of a sudden it went from a close of around 120 and a half. That thing was up to 120, almost 122 this morning before selling off. Now, well, why was the sell off? What, what caused the sell off? Well, I think it was overreaction to what happened in Wa in Washington this morning because it went from a concern it went from what people immediately thought was a terrorist act all right I mean it was it was terrible what happened it's absolutely terrible uh, but it wasn't uh, uh, some widespread terror and I think the market reacted and said okay this isn't what I thought it was and gold reacted but then what really pushed gold down again was the hike in interest rates, all right. Also, by the, the hike in interest rates and a little calming effect after the after about the morning hour or so. So, uh, what we're seeing here is we're seeing uh, both. We're seeing different channels. You know, we've got three channels on the screen here. But if you take a look at this uh, this parallel channel and then what we call the propulsion channel here, this is bouncing right off of our propulsion, which is giving us. Uh, you know, even though it came back down, we've got a hard line right here around the 120 area. I think this is a wonderful place uh, where, you know, we could enact an intermediate term strategy uh, in gold. Well, you know what? Let's just take a look at one. And I'm going to take a look at one more uh, that uh, we could look at into uh, later in this, this evening when we talk about spreads. So let's go to GLD. To do that, uh, tools users, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to hop over to options and go to option chains. And then we're going to bring up the option chain for GLD. So I'm going to type in GLD. And I'm going to click on, uh, before I click on update, actually, you know what? Let's update it first because it's going to reset the, the, the information on the left. And I want to go out and let's take a look at, let's go out to September as an example, all right? Because I don't want something that's going to expire in a week or a month. I don't want something that's going to be out there a while. And so let's take a look at September. So let's go ahead and update. Let's look at September gold. And remember, 120 is where we are, kind of right in the middle there. So you got the 120 calls, which are trading at $2.89. Okay. Now let's back up and look at that chart one more time. 
In fact, we can look at it this way. The top of this area is around 125. So let's use that as our target. Now, if the top of our target is 125, and I've got a 120 call option, and I'm going to go ahead and just punch one of these in and look at my risk graph. What is my risk graph going to tell me now? Uh, is it going to tell me that based on my prognosis that I can make money? Because that's really the first thing you have to do, folks. I mean, you can't just buy a call option because you think it's going to go up. Thinking is a strategy best suited in educational institutes, okay? Thinking is best in trading when you think you want to look at the markets when the markets are closed to assess potential opportunities. But when it comes to, uh, to, to uh, looking at um, stocks, you know, I need, A, I need to have an objective reason to buy or sell. And then B, I need to match up the right option to where if my prognosis is correct, that I will be profitable. So I said 125. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the bottom of the tools. And down here under the risk graph settings, there's an area that says stock limits. And I can put in stock limits and I could type in, oh, uh, let's put 100 in. And then let's put in 125. Now, this is going to look like an interesting graph, but bear with me on it. We're going to zoom in to the window that we want to look at. Now, what does this graph tell me? Stock price of Spider Gold shares on the left. Call option on the right. This is today where the red line, this is today, hits the cross of zero and today's stock price. That's where we are today. There'll be some slippage in there, but not much on this one because this is a this is a fairly liquid, a very liquid uh, stock option. So as you can see here, if gold goes to 125, which I put that as the top limit, so all I got to do is come all the way up here to the top, and I can see immediately that at expiration, you know, I'm going to be sitting somewhere around uh, $211 profit. But maybe I don't wait till expiration. Maybe it hits 25. Um, in about 30 days. If it hits 25 in about 30 days, it looks like I'm going to be sitting with about $300 in profit on 100 or 292.67, excuse me, on a profit of 100 or on a stock that's $125. Or how about it happens 30 days to expiration? Let's say sometime in mid August. Then we could have potentially a little less than $250 in potential profits, right? So each one of these timelines gives me an idea of based on where that stock price is. I can then move over to stock price and I can come down and I can get an idea of what that, that uh, potential profit is. And remember, you can always do that too by, by the hover charts that we have on Tom's option tools. Just hover over a certain place, All right? You might come down here and say, well, I see this trend line, these, these lower highs. Maybe I want to stick to the bottom here of this standard deviation. If we get down to this standard deviation in the next day or so, if, if we drop the 117, I want to get out of this. And then I'll get out with $125 potential loss instead of waiting until we get to 300, all right, or, or what the, 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 the rock bottom is, which is 288. You know, if we breach that low, what's it look like? Well, it looks like 100 and roughly $150 loss. And then, of course, if we breach that low in you know 30 days from now, it's more like a $200 loss. If we breach that low uh, 60 days from now, about $260 loss. And of course, we would breach it at expiration, 289 So these graphs are going to help you in, in an idea of coming up with your theoretical profits and losses as we get to expiration. All right. So that's gold. That's an example of, uh, of a gold um, case study. The t September 2017, September 15th. 120 calls, last priced, uh, mid price 289. They're 286 by 292. So $289 of cost plus commissions if you, if you get it at that price. Uh, that's your risk. Your reward is unlimited, uh, but I like to say it's unlimited until you either take it off or it expires. All right. And so I have limitations. I call them profit targets. All right. Anybody can get into a trade. All right. But it's only the folks that plan, execute, and manage their trades that know the best time to get out, both on the winning side and on the losing side. And sometimes you can wait. And sometimes you wait on, on certain trades. 
you know, sometimes you wait on trades and they don't work out. And that happens, but that's a calculated risk. All right. I knew a student, and I'm not going to say this person's name from long ago, that came up to me. And this student, male or female, I won't even tell you what gender it was. This student told me, I never take losses. And I went, really? I mean, I had to do a double take. I thought, wow, maybe I need to add this one to the team. And this student said, I don't take losses. If I don't get a profit, I don't exit the trade. Do you know what that told me? That told me that if this student doesn't take a profit, this student, I'm trying so hard not to say he or she, (laughs) this student will let that option expire worthless because this student did not want to take a loss. All right. That's like me not wanting to step on the scale to know how much I weigh because I know I'm not going to like how it feels, right? (laughs) That's the best way I can explain it. And so, you know, uh, so you have to, really, you have to, you know, I know it's the most boring part of trading is the planning part, the executing part, and the management part, but it also, to me, will determine whether you're consistently profitable or consistently not. All right, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, it on gold. So let's go ahead and move forward. We talked about Apple. Now, Apple is a really interesting one because Apple, two days later, also was part of the tech wreck. And we went from 155 down to 145 uh, very quickly within two days uh, at you know Friday and Monday. And now we're still hanging out around the 145, 146 timeframe. So this is the point where uh, you know, you take a look and you say to yourself, all right, did we breach something that that I may want to consider, you know, uh, taking a second look at, you know, and so I'll do this with Apple and then I'm going to move on a little quicker with the other two. But take a look at, let's take a look at Apple real quick. Um, I'm going to pop over to our option tables once again. Let's go and type in AAPL and we're going to look at Apple and we're going to look at the July 21st because that's one of the ones we were looking at. Luckily, it wasn't a weekly. <laughs> you need time. You know, you need time in your trades. And by the way, uh, that one's a little premature because it doesn't really, it really doesn't set in to a pattern that I'm looking at for another couple of days. But I wanted to show it as a case study last week because it was, uh, it is a stock that everybody knows. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and look. Uh, let me hit the update button one more time. Make sure I get the right data. So 145.16. So now you see the 155s. The 155s dropped. Uh, you know, it dropped down to 61 cents. But uh, now what you want to look at is, do I look at 145? Do I wait before I make an entry? If I entered, what do I do? All right, well, you have to determine whether or not, uh, you know, what you're seeing is going to work itself out. Uh, you know, if we're going to see a comeback. Now, to see a comeback on Apple, I'd need to see Apple go back up to around 157 and a half uh, to be at that break even point. But how many of you know that there are ways where you can fix an option that drops in value? How many of you know this? All right. How to fix how to how to fix a, a losing position? There are ways to fix losing positions. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. When we uh we get back next week because I don't have the time to do it tonight. But when we get back next week, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to call it Options 911, okay? Options Emergency, how to fix a losing call option position. I'm going to show you how to do that next week. It's a very special trade, and it does work. Uh, it only works on a set, certain set of options. But we're going to take a look at Apple again. We're going to see if we can fix Apple without adding any extra money to the trade. That is an important point. And that's where everybody goes, whoa, that's interesting. I want to learn what that's about. We'll do that next week. All right. But yes, so Apple was one was one of the case studies we looked at last week that is underwater. All right. So you have to determine at, you know, when things like this happen, do I A cut bait, bait and run, which a lot of times I do. Do I B try to develop a fix it strategy? Uh, or do, or I could maybe even add to the position and, and double down. 
And the only way I would ever double down on something is if the system or strategy that I do actually has more than one entry point. And tonight I'm actually going to show you something where we have up to three units of entry uh, on something called Darknet. All right. We have it's a three unit entry type of strategy, which means that you don't spend all your money on that trade because you can have up to three units of entry on that particular trading style. All right. Again, comes back to risk management. But Apple uh, down. Now, let me show you a silver lining. Anthem, which we talked about, bullish, keeps going up. That was a bullish strategy on the high low we looked at last week. And Schlumberger. Schlumberger was a bear on the high low last week. And look what it did. I mean, it's dropping as well. So we are seeing something else that I want to point out to you. And it starts with a D. Does anybody in the room, as I'm looking at the questions now, does anybody in the room know what the big D is? All right. What's the big D word that we talk about a lot? Or, well, those of you that haven't been with me before, you're going to hear it. But what's the big D word that we talk about when it comes to trading? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's going right down the middle. Dividend is one of them. Oh, I got another one, Delta. And Delta is real close. It's Delta, but it's also diversification. And diversification is that, you know, you don't look at something like an Apple and say, oh, gosh, Apple's done so well, so well for so many years. I'm just going to take all my money and throw it in Apple. Because you know that's going to be the wrong time to do it. Diversification, not only in long-term stocks and long-term investments works well, it also works well on the short term as an option trader. So what we like to do is we like to try to balance ourselves out, all right? Pat said it, diversify, all right? You want to you want to uh, position yourself where, you know, you have as many, you try to have as many calls as you do puts, and that's just not always going to happen, but it can be there. And sometimes if you have call options on one security, the other security could move in the total opposite uh, direction. That's called correlation or negative correlation. Now, uh, is there a way that I can find a group of negatively correlated stocks that correlate negative to the stock market? In case I'm a little nervous about that. I'm going to show you how real quick. Let's pop on over to the tools. Let's go to stocks. And what I want you to do is once you go to stock analysis, you know, where we went to see the high low last week. We have something called correlations. This is easy. So let's take the penny and weekly stock list that we all built last week. And let's go ahead and we're going to put that against the QQQ because the QQQ looked pretty rough last week. And I want to see... Uh, can I can I build a list? Can I find a list that runs opposite of the QQQ? You know what? I hit the button too soon. We want to look at something that is inversely correlated. All right. We could also look at extremely non-correlated, which means it's not going to go up or down regardless of whether the Qs go up or down. But let's look at the ones that move opposite of the Qs. Come on down. And you'll see as you go across here, you'll see a lot of um, ETFs that are moving opposite of the Qs. There's TLT, ha, huh, there's FXE, there's United Gas, there's GLD. So do you wonder why I'm actually looking at some of these right now? Because they could be great, uh, great diversified plays against technology, all right? And then there's stocks in here too, as you can see. Now we could also go and we could look at the extremely non-correlated ones. And by the way, uh, when do we really want to start looking at extremely, uh, at, at extremely non-correlated, especially what happened just in the last, let's call it 10 days, all right? Because you can set that correlation day length. In the last 10 days, you know, you've got AIG, which is non-correlated, Tiffany's, RTN, New, DG, I mean, Walmart's on here, Taroso's on here, UPS, Garmin, all right? You got XLV, and so... That's healthcare. So you've got a way of being able to create sublists. And what I can do is I can create a sublist. I'm going to show you exactly right now what we can do with this is that let's say that I that I uh, really like that high low thing, um, but I want to do a sublist based on extremely non correlated. Uh, is there anything in this in this group here we see here? So I can roll all the way over. Let's say I want to look at the top 25. So I'm going to take the top 25 of these 419 stocks. 
and I'm going to replace my stock list with them. Now, let's go look at the high low that we looked at last week. So you go to stock analysis, you go to high low. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to plug in my new stock list. All right, went off topic a little bit, guys. Apologize, but I thought this might be fun to do. Now, is there anything that's going up when the queues are going up and when the queues are going down? Anali Capital Management is hitting 100% of its high low right now. Take a look at the chart and kaboom. Look at that. All right, so extremely non correlated. XLV, the healthcare sector. And this is the overall sector. Look at this thing, making new highs. No, extremely non correlated. What else is extremely non correlated? Brocade, Walmart, Raytheon, Southwest, Toroso, uh, Tiffany's, and the list goes on and on. But you can see, what, of the, what in here is technology? It's not capital, healthcare, Brocade's technology, not Walmart, Raytheon's technology. Southwest, no, Toroso, no, DBS Trackers Harvest, no, Tiffany's, no, AIG, no. So of the top 10, 80% of this list has nothing to do with technology, only 20%. Is technology and so even 20 percent there's a couple of the bottom ends of technology that are not moving with the cues so how cool is that all right so that's what we can do we can take that list and we can separate that list and now we can then re-rank that list and take a look at what i like to call safe stocks for whatever reason you may want all right whatever your strategy is if you're saying to yourself wow i don't know about apple anymore i don't know about amazon i don't know about netflix you know um, then perhaps I need to uh, look at some stocks that are not moving around, that are not being talked about so much. All right. So at this point, let's just take a look and see uh, if I have any a couple questions on what I've covered so far. Um, when would you want to be extremely non-correlated? I saw that and then it got away. <laughs> when would when would I really? Right, I was answering that, Tom. I'll, I'll read the question now entirely. It says would. When would you want extremely non-correlated versus opposite correlated? If the cues are down, would you not want the opposite correlated? Yeah. So if you believe it, so if you believe that the cues and that the te technology itself is on its way down, and you want you're a call buyer, you want to buy things that go up in a, in, when the cues go down. That's where you'd use extremely non-correlated. But you know that's going to be a list that's going to be used short. You know from in short bursts. All right. I always like that the uh, the extremely non-correlated kind of runs its own game, and therefore it uh, is a nice, safer move. Now you're not going to get the kind of gains that you would expect to see on some of the stuff that's correlated and extremely non-correlated. But it's a safer area. It's a safer sandbox to play in in the world of trading. All right. So let's pop into uh, let's pop back into our charts. So I want to talk about uh, call and put spreads right now, okay? So, so far what we did was we just did a little review. That's all I did, all right? If you were with me last week, then you should be right on key. If you missed last week, then, you know, I did a, a an, almost an hour and a half session last week uh, on a lot of what I just covered, all right? So let's talk about call and put spreads. I'm going to do a little, little bit of a, a piece on call and put spreads. So what are spread options and why do we trade them? So bull call spreads. Bull call means bullish call spreads. It involves trading more than one option simultaneously. It allows us to lower the overall cost, the risk, and lower the fluctuation because you're doing something that's a little bit closer to delta neutral. It's going to be a positive delta trade, but it's not going to move lock and step like a call option would. That's because it doesn't cost what a call option does. All right. What is a bull call spread? Well, it involves buying a lower strike call and selling a higher strike call using the same uh, over uh, the same asset, the same expiration, but different strikes. So, for instance, if I was looking at a X Y Z, the 100 120 call spread. So, let's say I buy the 100 call, sell the 120 call. I have a debit uh, from what I bought to what I'm taking in of five dollars, and that means I'm buying the X Y Z 100 120 call spread for five. That'll cost me five hundred dollars. All right, five dollars per share. All right, 100 shares of the contract. One contract times 100. All right, times five, $500 for the spread. So at this point, the risk graph would look something like this. This is an expiration graph. So if I've got XYZ 100, 120 call spread for five, I know I have the right to buy for 100. I know I'm obligated to sell at 120. Those are the individuals. 
Well, when you piece this together, this is what it looks like. At expiration, you have a losing side and you have a winning side. The great news is, is that you've been able to do a couple of things. You've reduced your risk dramatically, number one. You've brought the break even closer to where you are, number two. And then number three is that your return on investment could actually be higher than simply purchasing a call option, especially purchasing the stock when you're looking at target prices. All right. So let's talk about what I mean by target prices. Say the stock goes from 100 to your target of 120. All right. If you're a stock, uh, if you're a uh, trader A, you're buying 100 shares for $100 a share. Trader B buys 100 call for 10 bucks. Trader C buys that 100, 120 call spread and pays five. So the risk, the reward, and the return on investment for the stock trader is as follows. It's $10,000 is what it's going to cost to buy 10, 000, uh, to buy 100 shares of a $100 stock, right? Yeah, it's going to be 5000 if you do it in a margin account, but it's still expensive. $2,000 reward at 120 if you use 120 as a target, and 20, that would be a 20% ROI return on investment. Trader B has a $1,000 risk, all right? At 120, uh, if we go to expiration, they, that call option would be worth 20 points or 2,000, which would give you a $1,000 return, all right, reward. And of course, that becomes a 100% return on investment, all right? And in Trader C, remember, they bought the spread for five. So we know the risk is, is going to be $500. But look at the reward. The reward could be a maximum $1,500 or a 300% return on investment. And the other thing, too, that we don't have on here is break even. And break even would be where you bought the stock for trader A, add $10 to the call, which is $110 for trader B, and $105 because it's the lower strike plus the premium to get to your break even. Now, let's look at the risks and losses, losses if we go the wrong way. If we're trading at $100, we'll suddenly go to $50. And that has happened, folks. We've had that happen uh, several times. You're going to see your risk is 10000 but you lose 5000 if it drops to fifty as a call trader or as a, as a stock trader. As a call trader, the most you can lose is the $10 or $1,000 that you paid for the call option. And then, of course, as a trader who buys a spread for five, well, the most you can lose is the actual spread because, remember, you took in money to help finance the call option that you bought. So put spreads are just like call spreads. Uh, they're used in bearish opportunities when put when options are too expensive. You'd buy the higher strike, sell the lower strike using the same expiration date on the same stock or ETF. And also, like call spreads, put spreads will give you that higher cost, higher reward, and higher profit potential, or lower cost, excuse me, higher reward, higher profit potential. Now, choosing the perfect spread, this is different for each person. But what I like to do is I like to do a, you know, I used to give this example long ago where I talked about when I used to, you know, walk the malls with my wife. Um, now, when you go into a mall, that's usually what people do in Florida. They walk them. In fact, if you look at the floors of the malls these days, a lot of them have arrows on them. It tells you how many miles you did when you walked around. See, the malls thought they had a good idea that, they, that having more foot traffic and make people walk around enough, they'd see something they'd like and they'd buy it. But Amazon had other plans, and now they've turned these malls into service centers now and exercise places for people who want to escape the heat and still exercise. But getting back to the perfect trade. So in the mall, I used to say, where are you now and where are you going? And for me, I was always going to the Apple store or the Tesla dealership in the mall. And so I would look at a map and I'd say, where am I and where am I going? Where am I now? That's my today price. That's what I want to buy. Where am I going? That's my target price. And I want to see, based on where am I at now and where am I going, can I create a trade that makes sense in terms of risk and reward? And that's what we're going to do right now. So let's go back and look at Apple once again. Let's say you're looking at Apple. And let's say that you uh, spot a trade on Apple and you're looking at July, the July 21st. All right. And we're going to set this up one more time. And we're going to look at our, our uh, information at the bottom. And again, folks, we have our option symbols here. 135, 40, 45, 50, 55 calls. We've got our prices and we've got a lot of other information in here, including uh, how much time value we have, we have on each option. As of right now, it's implied volatility 
the delta of the option, and then something we call percent to double, which we talked about last week, volume and open interest. And I know we covered all of this last week in detail, but I want to just bring it up again. But if you're looking at, for instance, uh, looking at Apple and you're saying to yourself, I think we can move 10 points higher between now and July 21st. My uh, you know, crisscross trading system, whatever it is that you may use, has said that I believe Apple's going to go higher. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at first, what would buying a call option on Apple cost me? So it's going to cost me $370 if I bought the at-the-money call. There's our at-the-money call. And then here's that 155 area right where we dropped. So yeah, if we if if, if this if Apple goes back up, the, this call option could show a profit of over seven hundred dollars. That's great based on your target price, right? So based on your target price, for instance, seven hundred dollars on something that's trading around three seventy. That's about that's close to a double, all right? That's about ninety percent return based on what? Based on your target, okay? Based on your target. Now let's go back over and see if we can do better. And this is what I always used to do is that that I would I would talk about this. This is how I trade spreads is I say, can the spread do better? All right. And there's sometimes it won't. There's sometimes it won't because it just doesn't make sense. All right. But can we buy a 150, a 145? And can we sell one, a 155 call? And can we get a better return on that? Can we get a better than 90% return? And the answer is yes, you can. Because now your trade's down to three hundred and nine dollars, but it's at, at the at the the target of one uh, of uh, one fifty five, you have a six hundred and ninety one dollar potential profit on three hundred nine dollars risk. That's a two hundred and twenty three percent return. So, the the call spread by that expiration date has a it does not cut the risk in half, but it doubles the reward. Or the return on investment during that same time frame. You know what else it does? It makes the break even better. The break even is actually a little bit lower than it would be if you bought the uh, just bought the call option on its own. Now I want to show you one more, and the next one I want to show you on is in gold because we talked about gold. Gold has some very interesting patterns going on in it right now, and we're going to talk about uh, seasonal patterns next week. But uh, what I want to share with you is that we talked about gold last week, and then I covered it in the market outlook. So I want to at least get into it uh, right now. And let's say that we're looking at those September options on gold once again. And so they have 93 days to expiration. And we're going to type in GLD. I'm going to click on update. Let's do that one more time. So 93 days. I think I had Rand Gold in there. So uh, I'm updating it with GLD. Let's take a look at GLD right now. So here's GLD. Stock price, 119.84. That's pretty close to 120. So your 120 calls are your at the money options. Remember, we looked at purchasing one of these and it was 289. So everybody remember that with a 125 uh, target on it. I'm going to bring that risk graph up once again. So here's gold. Here's the price at 129. Remember, we looked at it coming up into this area and it doubling in value uh, at the 125 area. All right. Let's bring that risk graph up. Let's put 125 on our upper screen. Let's bring the risk graph up a little bit more so we can see it. There we go. And that's what we're looking at is right up here, folks. All right. 211 and we saw the profits as we as we looked at uh, the, the the different markings all right uh 30 day or or yeah 30 days out you're looking at 276 all on a risk of 289 dollars all right now this says unlimited but what you got to do is you've got to come up with a target price if your target price is 125 um and you're buying something for 289 the most it could become is five hundred dollars, or, or, or yeah, the most your two hundred eighty nine dollars could become. Min, oh, excuse me, minimum value would be five points or five hundred dollars. So take two eighty nine off of that, and you're probably looking at about two ten, two eleven, which is what about an eighty percent uh, return. Okay. So my next question is, can the spread do better? Remember, 
buy the lower, sell the higher. That's what we're looking at doing, all right? I'm gonna buy the lower, sell the higher. I'm gonna update my gold uh, uh, position one more time. Let's go ahead and bring that in. And we'll go back down and we'll look at the call options on gold. Here they are. Remember, we're buying the 120, but we're gonna sell the 125. Um, remember, here's where I am, here's where I'm going. Here's where I'm going is 125. Those are trading for $1.18. That's going to take quite a chunk off of this 289, don't you think? More so than the Apple trade. So this is going to be very interesting when we update this trade. I went a little too high. We're going to click on risk graph. We're now going to look at the risk graph for the call spread. Buy the lower, 120 call, 289. Sell the higher, September 125 call, 118. Put those together, you're talking about a cost of $1.71 or $171 for the contract. The most that you can make now is not double, it's actually almost triple, $329. So instead of 80%, which you're getting on gold, you got 192%, which is, a, which is really double the target price on, uh, or the target return on the calls. So you have a new reason, if you haven't already figured it out, to take a good look at call spreads. Remember, lower cost, lower risk. Here's your newer reason. Better return on investment with the same target. Okay? Also a lower break even. So that is the uh, my, my quick and dirty on call spreads. Any questions before we continue on? And I'm going to do this again next week. All right? Uh, let's see, Maurice says, can you interpret the HVIV data, please? Well, uh, that's historical volatility and implied volatility. And historical volatility is based on the past movement, the range of the underlying asset. Implied volatility, which I think is e the, even the better of the two, is the perceived future movement of the asset based on option traders. And if you look at the, the implied volatility right now, of gold. What is it doing? It's on the downside of this range. So it's been ranging from, from between just below 10 to just above 15. It's on the lower end of the range, which means gold, the options on gold, whether you're bullish or bearish, the options on gold, it's a buyer's market. All right. Um, how about Apple? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at one of those risk graphs of Apple once again. Look at the implied volatility of Apple. Here's the low 12. Here's the high, probably around 30. And that's what that's in earnings. All right. Take earnings out of it and look what happened last week. And you can see it popped up to a 26 before dropping. But it's still, it's been popping the high on the high side. All right. And this was before the big drop, guys. Last week we were down here. This week we jumped up. So option prices actually increased in value for at the monies on Apple. Even more of a reason to look at spreading. Um, on a trade like this because you're getting higher volatility on what you're selling. You're also getting higher volatility on what you're buying too, but you're hedging off a good bit of that cost and risk depending on the asset that you use. All right. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions on here that I want to get real quick. Uh, can you please explain the lower break even? Absolutely. Okay, so let's take a look here at, um, we'll look at all four of these for a moment. Let's start with the calls in Apple. Look at the break even on the call. So the break even on the call, and, and right here, above all of this, is we've got some very nice pertinent information that you want to see. All right. Uh, you've got your uh, you've got obviously some great information on the stock over here, and then on this side is the option. But look here where it says downside and upside break even is the same because we're only using a call option. If this were a straddle, if this were a, a two-sided trade, it would have two break evens. But it's 148.70. How do you get to 148.70? 145 plus 370 equals 148.70. It's strike plus premium equals break even. Now, let's look at the spread. The spread is what? 148.09. It is difference between the premiums plus the lower strike, or lower strike plus your cost of your spread equals your break even. All right. Once again, Here's gold. Here's the gold call option. 289. Look at the break even. All right. 120 plus 289 equals 122.89. Break even. 
on the spread. Remember to spread lower strike, lower strike, plus and minus. You take the difference between the two because that's what you pay for the spread. So 120 plus $1.71 is 12171. So there's your break even. All right. And you are welcome. And guys, let me go ahead and start moving on. So um, uh, like I said, if you have any other questions, pop them in the box. Uh, you know, uh, I've got Jay in the room with me. Jay will try to get to as many questions as he can uh, that, that uh, you know, that I did not answer. Um, so we talked about puts. We talked about calls. We talked about put spreads, call spreads. Uh, and we did a little bit of a market update as well as our review. So you guys know our mantra. This has been my mantra since uh, since George Fontenelle's. Spot the opportunity, create the low risk trade, plan, execute, and manage the trade. Okay, and now we're through with questions. Let's go ahead and uh, let's move over to something I call market overview. So, if you want a really quick, down and dirty way of finding the stocks that are, you know, really the headliners, the, the leaders, and the laggers. Uh, based on a number of sort columns, you can go to an area called market overview within our tools. All right. That's going to be in the stocks. And that's going to be in the, uh, the uh, well, I'll just take you to it real quick. So stocks and you go over to stock analysis all the way down at the bottom, market overview. When you bring market overview up, you have a number of different things you can do. You can sort your entire overview by change or percent change. The day's high low, which we looked at last week, statistical volatility, or what I like to call stock volatility, implied volatility, that's the options, volume, the close. You can sort these by ascending and descending order, and you can have them all in different types of uh, what's called a type sort. There's also some criteria you can change by clicking on the show button where we can look at intervals between days. We can look at different types of stocks in terms of price how much volume you want, and interval thresholds, all right? But I just went ahead and popped in a couple of the, um, of the, the uh, defaults. And right here, this is as of today, all right? I just popped one today. I wanted to see what the top 10 uh, big moving stocks were today in the pennies and weekly segment. And there they are, all right? REGN, Tesla, Google, Google, Expedia, there's IBB, LMT, Home Depot, Amazon, and Celgene. What do these all have in common? Well, other than the fact that they were all up today, all right, they're all stocks that are trading over $100 because I put that as a threshold. So they, they showed some big changes. Amazon and Google uh, are really the, um, the, the, of the FANG stocks, the ones that are bouncing back quickly. All right, Netflix, not so much. Facebook is in there too. Uh, but Facebook didn't didn't make the top 10. And then you can see on here, not only the volume, but I wanted to take you over and just show you a couple of other things. Um, we've got the high low in here and where it is, uh, you know, in percent of the high low, uh, where it is in, in terms of its range. But I want you to look at something else too, nominal IV. So this is the average implied volatility percent. And that is a range between, we'll call it one and 100. All right, the closer you are to one, the cheaper those options are. The closer you are to 100, the more expensive those options are. All right, so notice most options are still on the cheaper side of the range. How about the bearish overview? Well, what I did was I also uh, did the market overview bearish and looked at uh, what, what fell today. All right, what fell in terms of dollar change is what I looked at. Priceline was the biggest uh, dollar change. Priceline is usually the biggest dollar change every day, so that didn't shock me at all. Here's BIIB, URI, PXD, CMG, NTES, NSC, CVX. Uh, nice, I got out of that trade a couple days ago. Toroso and UNP. Uh, the big differences I wanted to show you here was they had a bearish move on them. Okay. Now, you can do market overview in everything. You can do market overview. You can select and create your own list like we showed you last week. And you can run a market overview based on your own lists. So maybe you're making a safe list of non-correlated stocks and you look at that to determine what's bullish and what's bearish, All right? So we made a safe list. Let's go check out that safe list in here right now. So I'm not going to put a $100 price tag on it, but I am going to use my stock list and I'm just going to click on search real quick and let's just see how they come out. All right, now this is a 
compacted view where it shows me RTN, URI, XLV, Walmart at the top, but then you see TSO down here at the bottom, NUE, uh, etc. Now, if I want the expanded version, I click on expand. And again, it's just a matter of, of just ways of, ways of ranking stocks. It's called market overview, all right? You guys all got a free had a chance to get a free trial on this thing. If you haven't, you can get a free trial at tomsoptiontools.com at the top. And, you know, get in there and dig around. Market overview is a really neat place to go to get a spreadsheet format of not only how the entire stock markets do it, but how your stocks are doing, how your lists are doing. All right. So that brings me to dark net signals. Now, a lot of you were interested in knowing what dark net is and how we use it. All right. Dark net is an addition that is, it's been on Tom's Tools for a while now, all right, and not long after we launched Tom's Tools back in late 2014, all right, but uh, for those of you that uh, are not used to seeing Tom's Optic Tools, and maybe you're used to Platinum, this is new to you, all right, this is, this is kind of our answer for Elliott Wave. Now, I got nothing against Elliott Wave. I actually like Elliott Wave. I like to, to look at charts of Elliott Wave. The one thing I don't like about Elliott Wave, and I know everybody that's ever used Elliott Wave as a form of analysis, they hate this too, that those wave counts change. That just when they think they got something in place, the price moves and all of a sudden the count can flip. It can flip upside down sometimes. Darknet is something that is completely new. Um, we take the ability, uh, we, you know, we take uh, Elliott Wave in consideration in so much that it's very similar to Darknet because Darknet is to a contrarian trading strategy, all right? But where Darknet differs is that the signals are steadfast. That means once they go in there, they're always going to be there. They don't change. They don't move. You see the winning trades and you see the losing ones, all right? And Darknet is also a buying strategy only. So what we determined with years and years of backtesting on this particular strategy, all right, with these signals, because this is a 30-day trading strategy where Elliott Waves can go into months. In fact, the average Elliott Wave move uh, that I see is in excess of 90 days, especially on the upside. It's actually quite more. But Darknet, 30-day bulls tend to do much better than 30-day bears. And so that's why Darknet is a buying strategy only. It's a bullish strategy only. All right. This is an example of what Darknet looks like on the screen. You will see the chart and you will see the proprietary B for a buy. And then you'll see the S for a sell. And the B and the S again. And then, of course, this was Greenbrier Companies got a B yesterday. All right. Uh, so, and the symbol on this is GBX. So I'm showing you that just to give you an idea. We have three types of buy signals on, uh, on Darknet. So this is one of them I'm showing you now, but I'm showing you how they appear on our charts. All okay? right. So what is Darknet? Darknet is based on channel movement and channel, channel collisions, I like to call it. All right, for any of you that have ever heard of uh, W.D. Gann, W.D. Gann used to have a famous quote that went something like this. When price and time collide, change is imminent. All right. I like to say when channels collide, dark net buys are imminent. All right. So that's what we see. So this is an example of what we get every day when we look at Darknet, because Darknet will immediately uh, show us trading, potential trading opportunities before we even look at the chart, all right? So I can look at charts and then I can actually go back and I can look at something like this. So let me show you an example of how we look at a chart with Darknet. So I could go to stocks and charts and I could go to stock, stock charts and I could look at gold and let me go back and bring up uh, 120 days on gold. And there's 120 days. And now instead of the overlay being, uh, uh, being the, um, uh, it may stay there, but I'm going to change this from stock, stock to darknet channel. 
So I'm going to update now with our dark net trade. Look at what happened with gold. You know what? I'm going to bring us back 150 days. I can't wait till we see another dark net buying gold. Here's dark net. Okay. This is one of the signals. I'll talk about that in a minute. Here's the sell. Here's the buy, 114 and the sell, 120. Here's the buy, 115 and the sell, 120. And then it kept on moving up. Now it's dropped back down again. We're waiting for some channel collision to happen before we see a, a B there. Now, at this point, if I type in any symbol, I should be able to see darknet charts. Is there a darknet buy in the SPY? Nope. How about TLT? Is there a darknet uh, trade in TLT? There are a few. There's a buy at 116 and a sell uh, at 122. Here's a buy that happened at 120 and a sell that happened. This was just a couple weeks ago uh, at from 120 to 124. And this was only a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 day trade. This one here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, maybe 11, All right? Trading days. We don't see more than 20 trading days uh, between a buy and a sell in most cases. There are exceptions. There's always exceptions to any trading strategy. How about oil? USO. Now, USO is uh, really cheap, but here you go. Now, we had an uh, we, we have a, a B on here for buys, but we also have something called a, a, an R. An R is a rebuy. That's kind of like a level two. That's like your second entry. And then A is what we call add-on or the third entry. So you'll see Buy signals more than you'll see rebuys, and you'll see rebuys more than you'll see add-ons. But they're there. This is an example here where we had, going back, we had a buy at 10 and a sell at a little more than 10 and a half. We had a buy at 10 and a quarter. We had another buy close to 10. We had a sell at 11. We had a buy at 10 and a half. This was back in April, beginning of May. We had another buy that happened at 9 and a half, and then the sell came back at 10 and a quarter. Um, so you kind of see how this works. Um, but the signals are there. They don't move. All right. So we just wait for the next signals. Now I could sit here and I could go all day and look at stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities. Let's look at FXE while we're at it. And then we'll, then I'm going to show you another way we can do it. Look at this. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. And then nothing because there was no channel collisions after that. Now there's another way we could do this, a much easier way. And the easier way to do this is that I go back to our tools and I go to Darknet. All right, click right here where it says Options Analysis Darknet Channels. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to pop up this screen. This screen is our search screen. All you have to do is just click search. You can change this over here and do it again if you like, but start by just clicking search. And you're going to get a list of potential candidates on the screen. All right. This potential candidates looks a lot like the one that I just showed you on the presentation. The only difference is this one's as of today. So now we're looking at today's darknet. Let's take a look at some of these and see what kind of candidates we have. First of all, I have all these stocks and then I have a different a different type here. OK, they're all buys. There's no rebuys, no add ons uh, for today. These are all fresh buys. Here's our current stock trade. Here's a call option idea that we could look at. And that call option idea is going to be based on what you put in up here. So I have it set between 40 and 80 deltas. But if we change this and we call it between 60 and 80 deltas, that might change the search engine a little bit. All right. And it did. So now we've got 60s, 70s, there's a 90, there's a 95 delta down here. All right, so maybe you're looking at this, you're saying, wow, that's a lot of trades, but are these the most liquid of the li liquid trades? Well, these are based on what we call dark net stocks. Dark net stocks are a bigger list than the pennies and the weeklies. So if I go to pennies and weeklies, which is right up here, let's see how that changes the search. Nine right now. And four that are penny and weekly. Okay, now we got something to work with. So in this case, let's just take a look at a couple of these. If you click on the stock symbol, 
immediately you're going to get the chart. I don't see a buy in here until today. There's your dark net buy. I guess chocolate, I guess traders decided chocolate is not a tech stock. Maybe we overdid this one a bit. All right. And then we look at the stock, the, the trade itself, and I can actually open up a trade in a new window. And now we're going to get to see the actual trade itself. Okay. There's your trade. Uh, let me stop it right here. So Darknet says, look at the July 7th, 2017, 110 call that has 23 days to expiration. It's trading for between 480 and 540, mid-priced at $5.10, has a 77 delta. You know what that means? That means this thing's going to move, on average, 77 cents for every dollar move in the stock. I like that. All right. So there you go. That's Hershey's. Now let's look at some others. So we'll back, go back to our dark net to area. Agilent Technologies, big tech stock. All right. Um, now this one's trading at uh, $59.38. Let's look at it. Click on the letter A there for Agilent. And you can see it never, it hasn't had a dark net trade since last year or since the beginning of this year, but it got one today. Look at this. This, is t this could be telling us that a lot of these stocks outside of the ones that ran crazy may be ready for another rerun to the top. So there's a buy on Agilent. All right. How about VMware? There's one I haven't seen in a little while. VMW. And look at VMware. So VMware did have a, a dark net trade back at the end of the year. That was when it was below 80. The sell came in at above 90. That was about, about a $12 move between buy to sell. Nice. Now, I wanted to show you something else here, too. Jay, are you there? Because I'm going to do something. I am here. And I need, I, am here. I need your verbal here. So I'm going to zoom in on the screen. I'm going to try to zoom in on the screen. Do you see me zooming? Not yet. Okay. So well, what I did was I actually zoomed the screen in where we can actually see the signal. But if you're not seeing it, then there's only one other way I think I can do this. Uh, well, I, I maybe didn't see you zooming there. There, zoomed. Okay. But yeah. now you need to move the card over so that we can see it. So I got in close. Hmm. So you don't see it. I got a buy and a sell in the window, and I got a little E earnings there right in the I do see it now. You do see it now. You do see it now. All right. So you're lagging a bit. All right. So the thing I wanted to, to just to let everyone know is that here's the here's the signal here. And then that's the that's the bullish signal. And here's the sell signal. But I want you to see these dots here. So these are stop darts that come in. Stop dots. When you when we hit a stop dot, that's when the sell signal is effective. So what it's doing is after this amount of this big nice move we saw, it started putting in stop dots. And it's saying, you know what? We get a turn, we get a pullback and it hits one, it hits this dot for the day, we're out. And in, in this case, it hit another channel and it made a decision, time to get out. So we do have that stop technology that's put in that uh, we're constantly looking at as the trade goes forward. Nice. Now look what happened here. I'm going to zoom into the area that we're looking at uh, as of right now. Earnings report came out for this stock. And of course, it was up. It was higher, but we also got in the in a little bit of a downdraft, and then we had the Thursday, Friday, Monday era came along. Now we started moving a little bit, a little bit to the upside. We got a buy or a B today. All right, even though we had a red candle, we did hit some con some channel collision, and now Darknet saying it's time to look at this to the bull side. That's VMware. All right, if I click on the picture again. The chart disappears. Let's go click on Cena. We look at Cena. Cena had a buy and a rebuy, and that was down around 65, uh, 62. And then the sell came right up here at the top, right after the um, the earnings announcement at 80. Nice little move there. There's a buy that occurred uh, back in the middle of April at 70. Look at this move. Run, run, run. And then you got a sell up here near... Uh, Let's, it's above 100, so it's a 40-point move on Darknet, all right? That's an example where it exceeded the 30-day time frame. In fact, uh, middle of April to about the end of May. Uh, so that was about a six-week trade. 
But on average, they're around the 30-day mark, uh, 20 trading days, that is. Click the picture again. Bye-bye picture. Okay, so again here, we've got a couple of different ideas uh, here for us for Agilent. Uh, we've got Agilent at, uh, you know, this is, again, again, this is based on what you key in. I keyed in, I like in the money options. That's just the way I am. $245 for um, that Agilent July 21st. 57 and a half call. All right. That's for that's for uh two dollars forty five point five cents. So call it two forty six. All right. The next one was VMware. So VMware, based on my stuff, the stuff I keyed in, a July 7th 84 call for four dollars and sixty cents. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. There's your July 84 call for four dollars and sixty cents. You can see here it's 440 by 480, so there's a 40 cent spread on this. There's your chart. There was the last sell signal. Boom, down, there's the buy signal. And of course, here's the risk graph on this trade. Okay. And finally, Cena, July 21st, 80 calls for $7.70. And then, of course, you take a look at this graph. And you're going to see something uh, that I want to make sure you realize. 770 is your cost. It's 745 to 795, so that's a 50 cent spread, but that's on an 80 dollar stock. And of course, this one has 37 days to expiration. And here's the trade: last sell that we had. Uh, then, then of course we had the we had I believe we had a buy in and a sell up here just after earnings, like we said. And then we've got the buy coming up today. So, if I were to say which of these are best you know i love diversification but i also like slippage and i look here and i say wow 0 0.03 that's got the best slippage agilent technologies has the best slippage of the bunch but they're all underneath a 1.0 which make them a, a viable candidate right and then of course they're ranked by percent to double so if you look here hershey's a five percent move will double that option theoretically agilent 5.10 uh, 5.1 Double theoretical double, VMware five point nine seven theoretical double. Here's the one I got a little problem with. Cena, I need an eleven percent move in the stock to double this option by July twenty first. So these are ranked by percent to double because we like to see them move. All right. So we talked about darknet. We did some darknet case studies. All right. Uh, again, this is all evolves around spotting the opportunity, creating a low risk trade, and planning, executing, and managing the trade. So, um, before I give you a homework assignment, which I think is actually a pretty cool one, uh, are there any questions, Jay, that you see on the board that need answered? Sorry, clicking in. I'm, I'm bouncing between emails I, and these things here. I know you're working um, hard. <laughs> One guy wanted to look at the currencies for Darknet. Now, I didn't know if the currencies, that like there was a, an ETF of currencies in the list. And typically, I mean, if it's not on the list, we won't go search it out. But uh, We looked at FXE, and there was, I don't know if there was anything there or not, but let's go take a quick look. Uh, let's Now, okay. what we can do is up here, and by the way, next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to this because I want to show you. I'm actually going to look at this next week, and I'm going to show you a couple other things you can do with this too. But I don't want to give you too much. Right now, I want you to know how to search and how to navigate in here and, and be able to pull up the charts. But another way you can pull up any chart is just simply up here where it says Darknet Backtesters. And if you click on chart, you can do it that way. All right. So what kind of currency do you want to look at? Uh, let's, just, let's look at FXA. So that is the currency for the Australian dollar. All right. Look at this. Is this beautiful or what? So Darknet, forget the sell up here because there was a lower buy before that. But here we go. Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving buy at, at uh, 74 and a sell at 75. Then we got around Christmas time, a buy below 72 and a sell at 73 and a half. Buy uh, here in March at 75, sell at 77. Buy again at 75. Oops, goes down, but you get a rebuy at 70. Just below 74, call it 73, almost 73 and a half. 
And then the sell back at 75, which basically your first signal breaks even, your second signal makes money. That's what we have seen on the currency side. And guys also realize the currencies are not going to move that much, so you're not going to make that much either. All right, but you're also your risk is much lower on a currency share like FXA. All right. So any uh, Jay, any other stock symbols I might have missed on that one, or uh, you know, no other signals. The D folks is for dividends. E the is D for earnings. Is, yes, the D is for dividends, and the in the E is for earnings. Uh, so great, uh, great catch on that one. All right. So um, at that point. Let's talk about our homework for this week, and then I'm going to cut you guys loose, and uh, you'll you'll have some fun with um, uh, with what we're going to do here. So, first thing I want you to do is I want you to follow the case studies that we discussed tonight. All right, let's bring those back up one more time. All right, so uh, I'm going to look at we we were looking at case studies in darknet, and if I bring up the darknet charts one more time, I'm going to do that right now. So uh, to get there, um, I am going to go to my tools, hit Tom's tools. You can go right here at the front. You can jump on dark options analysis, darknet channels. And what I did, remember, is I changed this to pennies and weeklies. You could keep it on darknet if you want to. You'll get, you just get, you're just going to get a more expanded list. And then I looked at deltas that were 60 to 80. All right, clicked on search. There were four candidates that came up. HSY. I'm going to bring this up so everybody can see it. How's that? HSY, Hershey Company, A, Agilent Technologies, VMW, VMware, and Cena, which is Cena Group, all right? Those are the four case studies that I'd like you to follow, all right? And we'll look at the, uh, the, the earlier ones that we talked about last week as we go into next week, too, okay? And finally, the other piece I want to mention is wa watch the Darknet video that I am providing to you tonight using the link attached. So uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to provide you, not provided. I am going to provide you. And Jay, what do you think? Should I do one video or should I do a few videos on Darknet for them to watch over the week? What do you think? Uh, well, there's, yeah, I, I believe there's a couple of them that uh, one is the overview on the content of what it does and why it's there. And the others are the actual application or navigation process. So let's send them a few of them. Let's do that. So uh, tonight, later tonight, when I get you the uh, the recording, I will also be giving you links to some darknet videos that if you really want to hear our fantastic, brilliant programmers at work, you will hear what they have to say. And they're also going to, I think there might be a little bit of, is there a little bit of back testing in there too, Jay? Do we have back testing? Uh, we do, and there is. Okay, well then that's going to kind of preempt you into a little bit I wanna, about I want to show you next week is when I review the darknet strategy. I'm going to do a quick review. We're going to look at the case studies, and then we're gonna, I'm going to show you actually how you can go back and back test uh, back to years of data that we have on darknet to actually look at, at compiled data, so you can find stocks that have had the best runs in darknet, and so that might be help, helpful in weeding out stocks that don't work as well with stocks that do work. And of course, anybody that's a new subscriber, we have a free full trial of the software that I use tonight, and that's available at www.tomsoptiontools.com. When you click on Tom's Option Tools, all you got to do is just pop on up here. You know, I mentioned that this 30-day free trial is going away uh, on Sunday. And then Monday morning, I got a slew of emails, or Jay, uh, we got a slew of emails in where people were just having trouble uh, getting in. So uh, I guess based on overwhelming demand, we're leaving it. We were keeping it quiet, but we're leaving it on for the rest of the week. And then after that, uh, that goes away. So uh, that is it for the night, folks. I hope you enjoyed this session. If there's any other remaining questions that you may have, I'm just checking through real quick to see see what we might have. Wow, there's so many of them. My goodness, uh, Jay, this is going to be this is going to be one of those ones where uh, let me just punch something in the chat box for all of you to see. Uh, and this would be support at tomgentile.com. If we did not answer your question, all right, which for a lot of you that did, we didn't, email us. Oh, I was hanging. 
I was hanging good for 90% of the class, and then boom, everything comes rushing in because you're shutting the machine off. So I'm, <laughs> I will follow up. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I got to do? I got to go, I got to drink another shake. <laughs> yeah. Give me this spreadsheet with these questions, and I'll follow up with these guys. Absolutely. Tomorrow. We'll make sure like we Tom said, okay. Yeah, we'll make sure we get the questions from you guys. But if you have questions and concerns and you want to you want to come in and, and ask, you can uh, hit us at uh, support at TomGentile.com. Uh, other than that, guys, uh, thank you very much. Have a great night. I will have a recording to you as soon as possible. I will have links for the recording and links for the Darknet recordings included. I will see you here next Wednesday, same time, same channel. Uh, wait till you see what we got to get into next week. We're going to talk about 90% or better uh, historical accuracy trades and how we put these on using nothing but a calendar. We call this money patterns. This is going to be a lot of fun for those of you who've never seen this before. You're going to love it. And we will have case studies for you uh, for next Wednesday and going forward. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye now.